The Future by Wesley McNair On the afternoon talk shows of America, the guests have suffered life's sorrows long enough. All they require now is the opportunity for closure, to put the whole thing behind them and get on with their lives. That their lives, in fact, are getting on with them even as they announce their requirement is written on the faces of the younger ones wrinkling their brows and the skin of their elders collecting just under their set chins. It's not easy to escape the past, but who wouldn't want to live in a future where the worst has already happened and Americans can finally relax after daring to demand a different way? For the rest of us, the future, barring variations, turns out to be not so different from the present where we have always lived the same struggle of wishes and losses and hope, that old lieutenant picking us up every so often to dust us off and adjust our helmets. Adjustment, for that matter, may be the one lesson hope has to give, serving us best when we begin to find what we didn't know we wanted in what the future brings. Nobody would have asked for the ice storm that takes down trees and knocks the power out leaving nothing but two buckets of snow melting on the wood stove and candlelight so weak the old man sitting at the kitchen table can hardly see to play cards. Yet how else but by the old woman's laughter when he mistakes a jack for a queen would he look at her face in the half light as if for the first time while the kitchen around them and the very cards he holds in his hands disappear. In the deep moment of his looking and her looking back, there is no future, only right now. All, anyway, each one of us has ever had. And all the two of them, sitting together in the dark, among the cracked notes of the snow thawing beside them on the stove, right now, will ever need. <laughs>